So first question I have for you is um, when you were first approached about this project, what was it about this character and the story that made you decide to sign on to the project? Well, I'll tell you a story. I wasn't meant to play the, the Kovac. I wasn't meant to play the lead guy. I was playing another role, um, which I won't say because I don't want to take anything away from the actor that's playing it now. But I was playing a smaller role in the movie and the nature of our business, you know, things th schedule shift and, and things get changed. And, and this movie got pushed to a later date than it was meant to start, originally start. And the lead actor uh, who was meant to play Kovac could no longer play Kovac. Um, and I got an opportunity to, to put a tape down to audition um, for the role. And the director and the producers, uh, I guess, liked what they saw um, and they gave me a shot. So originally, I loved the script anyway. It was fun, you know, it was a fun ride. Um, but I wasn't going to play uh, Kovac. So um, it all wow. happened pretty quickly. And then there I was in the hot seat, you know, a few weeks later in Italy, which is where we filmed the movie. Uh, for our viewers, can you just give us a little uh, idea of what the plot for the story is and your character? Yeah, I play uh, Kovac. I'm an Interpol agent um, caught up in the, in, the, in the middle of some pretty uh, nasty people. Um, uh, I would say, you know, the nasty guy is Harvey Keitel um, and his kind of team around him. Um, and somehow uh, Olga's character uh, gets dragged into the into the mess, which is somewhat my fault. And then we both kind of go on this mission to uh, make amends, or at least I go on a mission to make amends for for getting her caught up in it. And uh, And we both kind of, you know, I'm trying it. It's always hard when someone asks for the plot without giving the story away. Right, right. Um, look, it's it's a ride. It's like an action, you know, adventure about, I guess, both my character and Olga's character have this kind of journey in ourselves to repair some damage that has been done. But it's like a part of our life that we we along this kind of roller coaster of action. There's kind of a deeper core meaning to it about like, you know, making amends, I guess, you know, like we all, we all, we all have in life, right? None of us have lived a perfect life. Um, at least I don't believe it. Anyone that says they do is probably, you know, telling a little bit of a story or keeping some secrets. Um, you know, we've all, we've all had to learn through mistakes. That's, mm -hmm. that's life. And this is a story of, you know, a bit of that as well. You mentioned Olga, and, and obviously a lot of your scenes are going to be with her in this film. There's some great tension and drama between you and some great action scenes with both of you. Can you talk about working with her? And did you get a chance to speak to her before you filmed so you can get a little bit of... Uh, you know what? Not not too much before we filmed. Like, a, you know, just a, maybe a, some quick stunt training and, and, a, and a dinner or so with the cast. Um, but she's incredible. And we, we through this project... We now uh, just finished our second movie together. Wow. Um, and uh, we, we just really hit it off. And she's just, she's just one of those, I mean, she's, she's an incredible actress, an incredible person, um, and an incredible friend. I just got goosebumps saying that. True stuff. Like, she, she's just salt of the earth, you know? And I think for me, kind of being put in this lead role, you know, uh, I guess in the firing line, I couldn't have wished for a better co-star. You know, she just, she was great. And, you know, it's like uh, any indie film, you know, faces its challenges, you know, that's what, yeah. the more in this world, it's like, whether it's, you know, restrictive days and you've got to cram so much in and you're, you know, you're doing 12, 13, 14 hour days and it's, it, it gets a lot. And and she, she rolls with the punches, you know, she's a brilliant actress. She's a brilliant person um, and really works and, and really switches it on, you know. Um, she's great so it was it was really good uh a really good way for us to break the ice and, and there'd be many more you know one of the the great things i love about what well, i'm i was looking forward to this film is obviously harvey cartels and it's from one of the legends in the business brilliant um can you talk about working with him and did you get a chance to sit with him and talk to him between takes and just pick his brain about the business and the industry yeah, so Harvey and I share a mutual friend, uh, uh, incredible film producer called Lawrence Bender. 
Um, Lawrence made, you know, everything from like Kill Bill and Pulp Fictions to Harder They Fall. Um, and Lawrence and I are producing a couple of projects together. And so going into this, when I mentioned I was working with Harvey, he kind of, you know, he sent one of those lovely messages, which always helps with it, with, you know, in, in our world to be like, hey, you're going to be working with Oliver. You know, he's a great guy. Um, and so it, we immediately had that kind of common ground. And so we, we really, we really hit it off. I mean, off camera, he's just a, he's just a sweetheart. My parents actually came to set um, for a few days. And I remember like Harvey would finish, you know, contractually, it's like, uh, you know, finish a bit earlier than us because it would go into late evenings. And Harvey would be like, come on, Michael, Patricia, you're coming with me. You know, he's uh and, the, and we'd all go out for dinners and, you know, the guy's passion for life is still, and, and work is still there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot to be said for someone like him that's worked on so many projects, whether yeah. TV or film or and everything. And yet he still shows up with a smile and, and eager. And then you can really tell, like, you know, he's in it because he loves it. You know, at this point, the guy true, truly is, uh, is, is true to his craft. Um, and then on camera, you know, watching him getting to have scenes with Harvey and just watching, you know, it's it's always a, it's always lovely when you when you get a moment to stand off camera because they do his close up, and so I'd be off camera, but I'd get to watch him work like right there. Um, he's brilliant, you know. He's Harvey Keitel because he's Harvey Keitel, you know. That's it, <laughs> you know. There's a reason people like that stick around for a long time, and it's because mm -hmm. they're because they're fucking good. You know, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Uh, the film was shot in Italy. Um, one, was this your first time filming in Italy? And if so, what was it like filming there in such a beautiful historic environment? It was it was magical. It was my first time in Puglia, which is the region. We shot it in a town called Bari. Um, and uh, it was it was amazing. I fell in love with the place. I literally was. I remember my last I extended a couple of days after we wrapped and I started looking at properties and I was like, I want to live here. It was just, it just felt like a part of Italy. And I even think in the last, you know, 18 months since we filmed the movie, it's got even more popular. I know that even the UK have added like, added a direct flight to Bari now. Um, it's a magical place. It's, it's, it's got the authentic Italian feel to it, but it's not too touristy and it's beautiful and it's historic. Um, I think the hardest thing was like just not eating too much pasta. Or pasta, I should say, for the for the Americans. Um, it was just it was a lot of amazing food all the time, you know. Um and people, and the people were great. I, I remember I tell this uh <clears throat> this story to a friend the other day who was going there weird enough for a wedding. I I was about a week into the film, and you know, I just pinched my neck or something, and I looked online and you know, I, I didn't want to bother production because you know, wanted to figure out myself. So I'm online trying to find a chiropractor and I find this chiropractor and I walk there and it's about a 50 minute walk um, through the town of Bari. And I find this guy and he was, he was the most incredible chiropractor, but also the session finished. And he's like, you know, well, it was kind of this language barrier. We're using Google translate. And he said, where are you staying? And I told him, he said, Oh, it's so far. He says, come, I'll give you a ride. And he moves his like child seat out of this little Italian car <laughs> puts it in the trunk to give me a ride to my hotel. And I was just like, oh my God, that's humanity, you know? Yeah. Um, it was a really like, and that's what the people of Bari were like. They were just very welcoming um, and very nice. Uh, the movie is directed by Scott, I hope I say his last name right, Wein Weintraub? You said it perfectly. Right. This you is just actually perfectly. his feature film directing debut. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like working with him as a, a first time director and how it he is. was collaborative on set? Scott was amazing. Um, I mean, it was stressful, as I say, for everyone, I think, because of just, you know, the more I get into this in the film world, it's, it's uh, you know, you're, you're, you're always pressed against time, right? Every, every minute you go over is costing money and there's someone on the side being like, wrap it up and you're pushing. So you, you're constantly faced with that tension. Um, but Scott, I mean, you know, he's, he's brilliant at what he does. You know, he's, he's got an eye, he's got an eye for the, for the film um um but, you know he had an incredible uh career still has an incredible career as a, as a commercial director and and i think you know a lot of directors uh make that transition 
mm-hmm. but they don't understand the story. Scott really right. understands the story, you know, right. um, and he understands actors. And and he was, you know, he was he was just great to work with. Scott and I, you know, remained friends, and we actually had met, you know, a few times before, um, both being British, mutual friends and stuff. And and Scott, yeah, Scott's great, you know. The film had its premiere at the the Rome Film Festival, and you walked away with the uh, Breakout Actor of the Year award for your performance. Um, what is it like having your work recognized in in a project? And you said it's an indie film, so you, you definitely worked your butt off for this project. Yeah, it was um, it was amazing. I mean, look, I'm I'm 43 years old, so uh, picking up a Breakout Actor award, it was like one of those moments. I was like, you never know when it's going to come. You know what I mean? Any advice to anyone out there? you're winning breakout awards at 43 you just you just really don't know and I think that's the beauty of our of our industry you know I, I grew up in entertainment and I've had many many different chapters in it you know I grew up in ballet and dance for 12 years and then went into theater and then you know switched into hosting because I got offered a job doing that and then got back in. and you just never know how it's going to play out right but I think persistence is 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 what's needed it's needed for all of us doesn't matter whether you're behind the camera in front of the camera um and i think getting that award was just that it was just a lovely moment of like ah like i i never you know there's been plenty of times i would have said in my head this is never gonna happen i'm never gonna you know never gonna get a job never gonna get a movie never gonna get this you know our our negative self-talk that i think is more common in our industry because of the, the amount of times we're told no right um and and it was just it was a it was an amazing moment. I had mum and dad there, so that was great. Oh, that's awesome! Um, and and what you know, my my best mate, a dear friend, and he's been so great to me. We've known each other for over you know nearly twenty five years now. Um, Gerard Butler um, happened to be filming in Italy at the same time and came and gave me the award. Um, and so that was nice. It was a really nice moment to have with you know a uh, best best friend and, and my parents there. And, you know, he sat through the movie as well um i didn't get to see it it, uh, it, it was like six months after that i actually saw it because i had to go off and do press right when the movie started um but you know it's uh it's always nice when your peers you know give give great feedback and and it was a it was a it was a lovely day and and to to do it in rome you know like what a yeah. magical place to to get any kind of recognition or award you know and people that really really enjoyed it and i think it was nice for a festival to kind of honor an action film as well you know mm-hmm. um because it is it's you know action films uh, they tend not to get that like recognition which is but sad. at the same time yeah. yeah it is sad because at the same time it's how we all escape right like that's the that's what i did when i was a kid you know whether it was die hard or whatever it was it was like that that's my escape that's when i shut off the rest of the world i eat my popcorn and my chocolate and i just kind of disappear and yet it, it kind of just like gets brushed over as far as like any recognition. So I think it was a lovely moment, lovely moment for me, the producers, the director, the cast, because it really was like, it was a project that no one could have done alone. You know, it was a, it was a team effort across the board. So. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you also were a producer on this film. Is that correct? Uh, I, I, I helped here and there, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a film that I produced in the beginning. Oh, okay. No. I, I kind of thought you might have been a producer. I was going to ask you what it would have been like wearing both of those hats while you were working on that project. No, no, actually the one I just did, I worked with Olga again. I was a producer on, I found the scripts, I raised the money, I did everything, um, and was the lead actor in it. And I can tell you now, if I had any hair to lose, I would have lost it during that, you know, like it was the most nutty, stressful thing. Um, you know, as far as work I've been through, the, the juggle was insane, all the moving parts. And then I've been to like switch from the producer hat to being told we need you on set. And, you know, it was, it was a, it was a crazy experience. And also I think like, like an actor, when you get to produce, and I mean like really produce as far as like you you you're making it, you know, you're not just an EP from the background, you're an actual producer, you gain new respect and perspective you know it's it's a uh, for people in in those roles and also you understand how you know what we assume as a simple ask of like why can't this scene be moved or why can't i leave on that day or why can't i you know you realize oh no there's a big ripple effect to every one of those little dots you know every kind of it's like a game of chess every game every move that's made has a has an effect on the future right, so right 
Um, I guess if it taught me anything, it taught me, to, taught me to just keep my mouth shut a bit, you know? So there you go. <laughs> well, not, my final question for you is not only do you have this project out, um, what other, are there any uh, uh, upcoming products you can tell us about? Yeah, I have a I have an indie film called Another Day in America, which was written and directed by a guy called Emilio Mar Emilio Mauro. Um, he uh, incredible guy, and I helped him produce that. And and you know we made it for like nothing in Boston. We made it literally like for a few hundred thousand dollars, which is unheard of in a film business. Yeah. Um, but it's a great story. It's a very like kind of uh, uh, touches on everything now um in the world it's like a it's a it's a drama um kind of a dark drama comedy um and that's coming out i would say in the next i think like october i should have the date but i can't remember off the top of my head it's jet lag for you i just i just landed in new york from uh, europe yesterday and i could not sleep for the life of me um but uh but that's coming out so another day in america um, and then, as I say, I, I, uh, I rap Misdirection, which is a movie that I produced, and that's going to come out like spring of next year. Um, so a few things here and there. And then I'm about to start production on a movie called Skinamax, which is happening in Budapest. Oh, wow. Uh, in October. So um, I'll be jumping into that, um, which is which is great. You know, I'm I'm very uh, feel very lucky and blessed to keep working, you know. Yeah, I was gonna say you're you're keeping busy, man. And as as you know, in this, in your business, man, you just you just never know. You could go you a long know. time without a project. You never know. You never know. And if I if I've learned anything, sometimes you just gotta try and find a way to do it yourself. So you know, keep the ball rolling. So the ball's rolling, and it took took a took a while to get it rolling, and now I intend to keep it rolling. So 